everyone, Bon Yuki here with another video, and this time I'm discussing the Raspberry Pi 4 coupled with a Retro Tank Ultimate. So, right there, that's my Raspberry Pi 4. I have it in one of those passive heat sinks, and you can tell it's a Raspberry Pi 4 because it's got the USB, I'm using a USB, micro USB to USB-C adapter. And it's got the two micro HDMI outputs. Believe it or not, the Raspberry Pi 4 can output uh, 4K60 on the left port and 4K30 on the right port simultaneously. So that's pretty cool. But I'm using the RetroTink Ultimate. That's a Pi Hat by the venerable Mike Chi. Uh, I've had this for a while. You can use it for composite as video, RGB HV. RGBS, there's a little uh, sync switcher on it, and I'm using it for YPBPR. And connecting YPBPR in that mess of cables there, I have an output to my 36 inch JVC IR. And it's pretty simple to do, um, it's a little more convoluted than what it used to be on the Pi 2 and the Pi 3 because of the Raspberry Pi 4 handles the DPI overlay a little differently. Um, it's just one different command. For some reason, they, it's it just doesn't work if you do it the normal way, but they do have a workaround. That's just one different command, and all of a sudden, it works. Uh, the reason I'm making this video is a lot of people don't believe this works. Um, there was a time there where it did not work under Laka, and that's what I'm using now. And you could uh, see that I'm using Laka. Oh, hold on, let me see if I can show you an information here so you guys can see it. Um, to prove to you that this is actually Laka. And this is Laka 2.3.1, I believe. Let's see if it says it right here. Um, yeah, Laka version 2.3.1. And what's nice is that now that I got it working with Laka, a lot of the limitations that the Raspberry Pi 3 had fly out the window. For instance, I now can do 3493 by 224. And that's very, very high resolution. It's it's really high. So when you're like, you know, moving the screen around, <laughs> you have a lot of pixels to play with. But these are my typical settings. I haven't delved with Laka too much on the Pi. I, this is more just like, oh, they're saying it can't be done. And I'm like, well, I know it's harder to do than RetroPi. RetroPi, you could just use the old setup. Um, same things work on RetroPie, but on there is no official RetroPie out there. You have to use an unofficial one. So that's why that's why there's the misnomer out there saying, "Oh, these things don't work." Well, they, they work in unofficial ways. But I'll provide a link and uh, some information on those out there who are much more familiar with Linux than I am. I actually had my buddy do this with me. He's a Linux guru, and he looked at the problem and he saw the workaround. He was like, "Yeah, let's implement that. Let's see if it works." And sure enough, it does. And it works great. It's beautiful. I mean, uh, that extra resolution. I believe the what I had it on the Pi 3 was like 2048 was the max res it can go horizontal-wise. Well, this one, I'm doing 3840. And I, I moved it down to like 3460 because otherwise 3040 just comes way too big on the screen. But with that extra res, you, you mean, you could do some fantastic things, as you can see here. But this is a... Pretty pretty crisp image. I mean, I try other games too. I'm using what's called um, oh that's not what I wanted. Um, I'm using what's called Final Burn Neo, and I looked at the mains. They they don't have like the latest mains. I think Mame 2010 is the best. Uh, but here here's uh, here's a game we know looks pretty good. See that's Final Burn Neo. And this is Marvelous Capcom. So, like I said, it looks pretty pretty nice nice on the Laka. Uh, RetroPie was the same thing. But I, I like Laka a little more because it's more straightforward. As far as the drivers are concerned, Raspberry Pi 4 still has a long way to go when it comes to drivers. It's just, I, I, I think it's not mature yet. So if you do run out and buy a Raspberry Pi 4, understand that there are going to be some issues. You're not going to be able to do things as the things aren't accessible as you would just slapping a retro pie image and getting it to work. Laco does work, but it's the performance is better on the pie. It's a much better hardware, 
But understand there's going to be some growing pains you're going to have. It's not, it's not, I don't think you would consider this um, a very stable platform at the moment. But I'm just giving you guys a PSA that yes, you can get it to work with your Pi hat. I mean, it works with my, at least it works with the Retro Trick Ultimate. It definitely works. Um, so if you have any hiccups saying, hey, should I buy this? Will this work? A lot of people saying you could just use like a, an HDMI to VGA adapter. That'll work. I mean, I, I've, I've trusted it myself. It, it seems to work okay. But I do like the fact that the Retro Trink Ultimate has options. It has YPBPR, which is perfect for this screen. It has RGB SCAR output through that DB15. Uh, and it has RGB HV out of that. And then you get S video on composite as well. And there's not too many things out there that give you that S video out. I think the Retro Tink 2X does uh, S video in, but you're not getting S video out. So here's just another option for people to play with. And you got to get these Retro Tink Ultimates before they go. Um, Mike Chi says he's not supporting them anymore. The, 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 now you have adapters that are lag free, and it's probably an easier solution to set up. But. For those that do have it and they're like, hey, what do I do with this hardware? Our Esri Pi 4 doesn't work with it. Well, here's good proof that it is. Like I said, I'll put questions or comments. Uh, I'll try to help people out. I'm not a Linux guru, but it was pretty simple. You just, If you know how to do it on the Raspberry Pi 3, the 4 is just a couple more hurdles you have to jump through. And then other than that, it's pretty much the same thing. Anyway, have yourself a good one.